Um, I'm here as uh, on behalf of the William Michael Redfield State and as the uh, occupant of the office of the executor. Uh, to whom it may concern, this is on the record. There's uh, a number of handouts I also gave you um, that you should have right now. I hope this will be uh, recorded on the record so it will be up on the Internet. Our saga, be I'm very brief, our saga began with DTE October 31st, 2011 when we first posted the notice of non-consent for the AMI meter. The DTE letter writing campaign began in July of 13, whereby we promptly replied with polite yet firm non-consent to DTE's generous offers. After 30 plus certified mailings, DTE failed to honor any of the requests. We might also add that Attorney General Schutte, Governor Snyder, Chairman Talberg, and this esteemed committee's previous chair were notified of these various shenanigans. During one of the interchanges with DTE, we offered an equitable solution to solve the main issue we have regarding the safety of these non-UL listed, non-ANSI certified, non-NEC listed, non-Michigan building code approved dangerous arc flashing, arc flash causing ungrounded fire hazard devices. Our main concern was to avoid installing the hazardous AMI, AMI contraption directly to the building we're responsible for protecting. That solution was to install it remotely near the underground termination point. DTE visited the site and agreed to provide a price to do this, and they failed to present this offer. As stated in the 2015 testimony, I have serviced DTE power plants for 30-plus years, and I'm very familiar with power supply systems. DTE does not allow any component for electrical service in their buildings without vendor assurances that all components could form to one or more of the certifying, certifying agencies noted above. You might ask why. Very simply, it boils down to transferring liability to the risk insurers. As I was investigating this, my insurance carrier stated they would not insure the home if the ungrounded non-UL listed component was installed on the premises. This information was transmitted to DTE, and they ignored it. We even share the internal field action bulletin DTE number 2015-002 dated April 23rd, 15 to DTE showing a blown up meter so their personnel could be on the lookout for these potentially life-threatening failures. Once again, we were ignored by DTE. On the morning of September 13, 17, I was met unannounced by the DTE goon squad of six at approximately 8.30 a.m led by Nicole A. Willinger of 22369 Knollwood Drive, Browntown's Brownstown Township. We were informed DTE was there to disconnect the power because there was a lock on the analog meter preventing DTE access. Mrs. Willinger was advised by me that she was ill-informed, and I showed her there was no lock. She asked if I wanted the meter. I stated no. Next page. Furthermore, Mrs. Willinger indicated that they had no AMI meters on site to install and that they would have to disconnect the power. I politely told her she has to do what she has to do, but there will be consequences for her actions. She contacted another DTE technician, Jeff Gunacki of 32102 Vegas Drive, Warren, and he came to the house with two AMI meters. In the meantime, we contacted the Troy Police Department to document the events, which I have the police report dated September 13, 17, stating, I was forced under duress to accept the dangerous AMI meter. We were grateful for the six officers that arrived to make sure we secured the names of the DTE perpetrators. The irony in this message is the disconnect threat was under the auspices of MS MPSC Rule 46, 460.136, which states in part that the power is being disconnected for health and safety when locks are present. There was no lock. However, now that we have two AMI meters installed, there are three locks mounted on them, keeping the occupants of this dwelling extra safe. During the meter installation process, we asked Mrs. Willinger if the fire department or police have a device to open the DTE locks in the event of a fire. She stated they do. When I contacted the fire chief in Troy, he emphatically stated that Troy does not have any unlocking device for meter removal. This is a very unsafe condition particularly if the first responders need to battle a fire and are unable to get through to DTE in an emergency. No wonder the NPSC has a rule in place. Over the past seven years, we've made numerous attempts to work with DTE, always met with manipulative tactics and lies. 
While we're impressed with the good folks who support this initiative, it appears the Michigan Energy Policy Committee is unable to move this to the floor because the small money from the hardworking Michigan citizens is not enough to compete with the deep pocket lobbyists funded by DTE in Lansing or elsewhere. At this point, our goal is to get the analog choice pushed forward, and we implore you to do that, please. In addition, we'd like this government body to assist in getting the locks currently installed removed from the unsafe AMI meters on any building as requested by its occupants so they can be pulled by the appropriate first responders in the event of an emergency. Thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to just do one quick follow-up if I have time, Senator Glenn, with respect to uh, uh, Representative Lauer's uh, request about the transients. The whole issue is that the transient frequencies coming through on the primary side into the circuit breaker goes throughout every circuit in the home. And we have found and documented through scopes that it's frequencing and resonating at about 14 hertz. The human body resonates at about 7 to 8 hertz. People who are hypersensitive to, the, to this problem, the issue is that that frequency is just too close to their natural frequency in their body, and that's what's causing the issues. It's well documented. It's not rocket science. It's a really simple issue. There are instruments out there that can be put onto the primary side to to knock down the transients, but again, the whole issue is why are, this, why are we being jammed down our throats with these meters? We need you guys to step up and make a change. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Redfield.